welcome back to another exciting edition of IDTV, the show that informs, entertains, and stimulates. I'm your host, Karen Jaffe, and joining me to host the show this spring 2014 is Nick Winstead. Thanks, Karen. It's great to be hosting with you and the great crew that is producing this season's shows. We have an exciting lineup of stories to share with you. Isn't that right, Karen? That's right, Nick. With all the news about accreditation crisis at City College San Francisco, our first story delves into how this crisis is affecting student enrollment. In January, San Francisco Superior Court elected to keep City College open and accredited. Still enrollments dropped 15%, and because of this, classes are being cut all over campus. In order for a class to stay open, they need to have a minimum of 20 students. And because it was canceled after a few weeks, so it was too late to switch in another campus or another class, so I lost a chance. This simple quota can have serious repercussions for students enrolled in any class. Depending on when it's canceled, students may or may not be able to replace their courses. Fortunately, a lot of the students at City College are pretty resourceful. Well, I had to sign up for another class. After By then, it was past the uh, time to sign up, so I had to do a late ad. I just rescheduled to another day that Thursday, and my schedule shifted around. So I may do, but it was inconvenient. This raises valid questions, though. People at City College want to know why classes are being cut if funding is not an issue this year. The fact that we build a plan, which is 80% driven by the schedule of classes means that we intend to offer those classes. Most of the classes, and I'm talking 60, 75% of them, had less than five students enrolled in them. That's not prudent. The drop in enrollment has affected departments all across campus. Classes that are normally packed with students standing in the back of the room are reporting empty seats. Departments such as math and political science are also reporting empty sections, which almost never happens. My humanities class, I actually need that class for a transfer. English, foreign language classes, and the arts are among the most heavily affected, but it isn't just university transferable classes that are disappearing. I see it affecting working students immediately in um, the largest sense um, who rely on the work training and other vocational programs here at the school. The drop in enrollment doesn't just slow students' educational progress. It has serious effects for teachers as well. We sat down with Elisa Messer, president of the local union ATF 2121, to discuss the effects on instructors. When classes are cut, faculty lose classes. They sometimes go well under, which means they owe the college a lot to, and they have to catch up later. Or some people actually lose their part-time faculty, actually lose their job when classes are cut. There are a lot of misconceptions about this problem. Most of the students we spoke to didn't even know about it, but those who do have very real concerns. So it would have been a necessity. I have financial aid issues anyway, so I would need it. <laughs> and then I already paid for that class, so, and it's cut. Do I get the money back? Mm -hmm. In the last year, CCSF's administration has hired several marketing experts who have produced a half a million dollar marketing campaign in order to boost enrollment. The teachers union and Save CCSF organizers have taken steps towards this same goal. We've basically been taking on the tactics of building like mass events to protest what is happening here. Faculty, staff, students out at transit stations and all over the place with real enrollment outreach. Even with all the efforts of these groups, CCSF stands to lose millions in state funding if enrollment doesn't rise next semester. There is still time to fix this problem. 2014 is a hold harmless year. When a college loses some enrollment, it doesn't lose the money that comes with the funding for those students right away. The college has an additional year, what's called the hold harmless year, where the college will continue to get the same level of funding, even if the students are a little bit less, so that we can get back up. Because otherwise, you cut, and then you go down into this downward spiral. Senator Leno uh, has introduced a bill into the legislature specifically for us that would allow for an extra year of stabilization funding. Despite all the convoluted news stories, conflict between factions, and just sensationalist television, it's important for students to remember the bottom line. City College of San Francisco is open, accredited, and in need of enrolled students. For IDTV, I'm Mike Monadero. Thank you so much to Mike Monadero and his team for that informative report. Next up, we have Joshua Hyman in an inst with an installment of IDTV's Inside the Classroom. 
We now bring you an in-depth look inside one of CCSF's rarely talked about but longest running and highly respected classes, Women's Self-Defense. Women's Self-Defense has been taught for over 30 years by world-recognized judo master and coach, Professor Mitchell Palacio. Professor Palacio, it's an honor to have you here. Thank you, Joshua. So tell me, for you've obviously dedicated a huge portion of your life to the mastery of judo, and yet for 30 years now, you've also taught a women's self-defense course on, alongside your judo work. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about what motivated you to start the class and what's kept you doing it for 30 years. Well, Josh, for a, for a long time, a lot of the self-defense classes were taught from, from a basis of, uh, of a martial art, uh, judo, a karate, a taekwondo. And sometimes those techniques don't really apply to the street. And so what I have done is taken a lot of the techniques that you can utilize uh, from these different martial arts of judo, karate, jiu-jitsu, taekwondo, and be able to utilize them on the street, which is a very, very important aspect of it. Wow. That's fascinating. And so tell me this, though. I mean, what, what is the reality that you're training these women for as, as well, far as life on the, like, as far as what challenges women face on the street? Well, statistics have shown now that women are one out of one, one out of five women will be sexually assaulted. And uh, the need to be aware of your surrounding, the need to be able to defend yourself becomes very, very important. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so is there you know, one specific lesson that you really hope that all the students who take your course will walk away from it with? The main focus really is about awareness of where you are, awareness of the situation. And then from there is learning simple techniques. But the awareness part is probably the most important thing that you can learn in a self-defense program. Do you ever hear from your old students about the effect that the class has had in their lives? Yes, I've had one uh, young lady uh, who had her daughter at a playground and we were just talking about uh, body language, positive body language, and she was telling me that a, a perpetrator came up to her daughter in the playground, she was on a swing, and she put her hands up and told him to stop. Like, hey, what are you doing? And he froze in, in, in his tracks, and then she told me, oh my God, my legs were shaking, but my hands were up and I was projecting like, no, I'm not gonna let this happen. And so that was very, very important. She was able to utilize the, the lesson and the lecture I was just talking about of, of body language. Yeah, that's excellent. And so what type of woman would benefit from your class? Do they have to be strong and, and, and super athletic or? No, not at all. Uh, every woman can benefit from as old as you want to be mm -hmm. to as, as, as young as, as you can. Yeah. So right now in our classes, we have women who are 65 plus and we have uh, women just, just coming out of high school at 17. So for that wide range, they have learned that simple techniques are very, very effective. We have a, we have a red man suit, it's a fully padded suit. And so after they learned a the technique of how to defend themselves, we have this person dressed up in the suit and attack the women. And then they actually learn how to defend themselves from that position. Wow. Well, thank you for talking with us, Professor. I wish we had more time. But coming up, Professor Palacio will demonstrate a safety lesson for all of you at home who've had to deal with a situation all too common for so many women today. While Professor Palacio sets up on the mat, let's take a look at this video that our intrepid team of CCSF broadcasting students shot of Professor Palacio's class. IDTV takes you inside the classroom. And welcome back. We're now joined in the studio by one of Professor Palacio's students this semester, Nerissa McLaurin. Nerissa is a 25-year-old Marine veteran studying women's self-defense for the first time here at CCSF. She'll be assisting Professor Palacio 
while well, he demonstrates a typical scene that takes place at a bus stop in the city. Let's watch. Hi. Hello. How you doing? I'm great. How are you? Pretty good. Oh. Hey, that's a nice looking shirt you have on. Thanks. Oh, well, that's pretty nice. What did it say? It says... Hey, I don't... hey. Get off me. Oh, oh. If you're interested in learning more about women's self-defense, come visit the admissions office here on campus or go to ccsf.edu for more information. Women's self-defense is offered every semester at CCSF's beautiful ocean campus in San Francisco. Financial aid is available.